Honestly, I'll, do, I'll let you in on a secret. Don't oh. tell anybody okay. I said this, right. but we figured out how to just see so much money uh -huh. out of Hollywood and the internet. Like, <laughs> we're just running with it. I know it, dude. Until the fucking wheels fall off. <laughs> Man, dude. Wait, hey, where's your book? Seven years ago was the start of an internet phenomenon that still has its roots in today's media landscape on YouTube and Twitch. A hyper-specific genre of content that was fueled by greed and lies from influencers, companies, and bad actors that capitalized off underage audiences. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO for short, is the most competitive first-person shooter game in the world. The mechanics of CSGO would seem bare bones compared to today's modern shooting games, but that is exactly what makes it so special. With limited movement, map awareness, accuracy, and speed are everything. The competitive CSGO scene was born in the early 2000s, but really picked up steam in the 2010s when the increased demand and popularity of the game meant million dollar prize pools. But there's no sense in talking about CSGO without one key aspect of the game. It wasn't until August 2013 when a whole new facet of the game was added in the arms deal update that would change the culture of CSGO forever, weapon skins. Weapon skins are unique designs and colors that players could buy and sell on the Steam marketplace to show off in game. If you play almost any modern game, it's obvious that virtual skins are an integral part of their monetization system. By design, some weapon skins are more rare than others, making them more valuable to some players, and as a result of this, the foundations for CSGO skin trading and gambling websites started popping up by using Steamworks API, or the Application Programming Interface. This basically means that people were able to link their Steam profiles to these websites, which allowed them to buy and sell skins. In the very same year that skins were added, people were already licking their lips at how they were going to make a lot of money off of this addition, and CSGO Lounge was born. This was the first CSGO gambling website that allowed users to wager their skins against other players on the outcome of competitive Counter-Strike matches. There was one glaring problem with CSGO Lounge that other websites around the same time would also adopt. There was no KYC or Know Your Customer procedure in place. KYC is necessary for legitimate casinos. They need to know who you are because they are dealing with huge financial transactions. Not only does KYC protect the casino, but also also the player. Online gambling without KYC means that anyone and everyone can gamble on your site, including kids. In order to understand the scope of the fraud that went on during this time, we have to know how CSGO gambling actually worked. Here's skins to the gambling site of your choice, traded them to their bots for a new fake currency that was roughly equivalent to US dollars, which they were your casino chips. You then bet that money with that currency on either matches or roulette spins to win more money which you then turned back into skins. And finally, you sold those skins to someone through another site to get back real human earth money. You see, skins were just the vehicle that allowed this type of gambling to go on for as long as it did. It was thought of as just a virtual video game item, right? It was standard practice for CSGO gambling websites to be licensed offshore to avoid the first level of legal obstacles. Luckily for you guys, I don't have to flee to another country to promote a product that I love, which is why today's video is sponsored by Allform. Allform is Helix and Birch's sister brand of sofas and chairs that are American made and easy to assemble. They're modular, so you can customize them to work well in any space, plus they're scratch and stain resistant and really comfortable too. You guys know how much I love my Helix mattress, and quite honestly, all form is just as amazing. No matter how you spend your downtime, your sofa is an integral part of your home. I personally am spending a ton of time editing my own videos and reading on my all form. You can customize your sofa to your space by creating over 500 unique combinations with seat numbers, corners, chases, and ottomans. They make it easy to find the perfect piece of furniture for your space your way. Based on my space, I got two sofas, a love seat in sand with espresso legs and a three seater in sand with espresso legs. What I love most about all form was how easy it was to set up these couches. I timed myself and I got it done in just about 15 minutes per couch. Because all form ships direct to consumer, they're able to use really premium materials at a reasonable price for you. Shipping is fast and free and you're not waiting around forever for a delivery. If you've purchased a sofa before, especially one that's customized, 
request, it can take two or three months to receive it. Allform is much quicker. The best part about all of this is that Allform delivers your couch to your door for free. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried yet, Allform has a 100 day trial. For whatever reason, if you don't fall in love with your new couches, they will come and pick it up for you, no questions asked, and you will get a full refund. I love my Allform sofas, and I think you would too. If you're looking for some new seating, check out Allform. Click on the link down below or go to allform.com slash Philion for 20% off any sofa of your choice. And thank you to Allform for sponsoring this video. It's quite easy to draw the parallel between CSGO gambling and the current boom of crypto casinos, operating with layers of unregulation hiding behind a universal currency. And in a very strange way, CSGO gambling even has overlap with NFTs. No, oh, but I want to bring this up while the fucking video's going. I had this idea yesterday and it would add value to, to skins infinitely. You should have a track list of ownership linking to like Steam profiles. Like, could you imagine if like JW unboxed the knife and sold it? It'd be that obviously worth like 10 times the usual amount, right? No wonder he's obsessed. The first taste of fraud in the CSGO scene was in 2014, when a professional team threw a match because it was rigged from the start like going down in the fifth in boxing. At this point in time, betting on competitive matches with skins was commonplace, and thousands of people just lost money. In 2015, games of chance were introduced, such as coin flips and roulette. This absolutely blew the lid on the once underground CSGO gambling craze. You could now take your chances to win exponential jackpots. And remember, we're dealing with unregulated gambling here, which means it's extremely easy for site owners to rig the games, which is exactly what happened. By 2016, $5 billion were wagered in CSGO gambling, with chance games overshadowing the match betting. This broke down to $3 billion through coin flips and roulette, and $2 billion on competitive match outcomes. The CSGO gambling scene was so successful in driving traffic to CSGO that people were buying the game just to participate in the gambling. Valve, which is the parent company of Steam that owns CSGO, had a problem on their hands, but that problem was making them a fortune. Valve was under fire for having the systems in place that encouraged illegal online gambling. Was Valve enabling underage gambling? Not entirely, but it was complicated. CSGO gambling drove more traffic to CSGO as a game, which means more money for Valve. And they were raking in 15% of every skin bought on the Steam marketplace. The figurative poker chips proved to be a cash cow for Valve. So was Valve turning a blind eye while profiting off of this weird, questionably legal exploit in their system? I think they were aware of it happening, saw the money coming in, but wouldn't say anything unless they had to which is precisely when the FTC stepped in. It was not a good look for their company. July 19th, 2016, Valve issued a cease and desist to 23 CSGO gambling websites. It was clear that they were no longer playing around, and these websites had 10 days to shut down or they would face serious consequences. The clause that Valve cited as reasoning for termination of these websites was use of Steam accounts for commercial gain. There were two main strategies at the time used by influencers to make a lot of money, fast. Number one was to get a sponsorship from a CSGO skin gambling website, not disclose that you're being paid to promote it, have the odds be rigged in your favor, and then give an Oscar-worthy performance of your acting. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen better acting in porn. Number two, I'll just ask a question. Why take a sketchy sponsorship from a CSGO gambling website when you can own one? Just as the underground market for CSGO gambling was exploding, it seemed as if the participants knew it was going to crash, and they had to cash out as much as possible before it was shut down forever. This is probably not gonna be allowed around long, and if you can make fucking money on video game pixels, I would do so. All right, Nick, you ready? We got 10 G's to fuck with. By mid 2015, everyone and their mother was trying to make a CSGO gambling website and new casinos started popping up everywhere. This was bad for business as the space was becoming oversaturated and it was rife with competition. But a few casinos had an advantage. Influencer marketing was a surefire way to drive massive amounts of traffic to your casino so long as you abused the parasocial relationship with your millions of fans. T. Martin and Pro Syndicate. 
these two YouTubers wrote the book on how to scam your audience. They would post videos showcasing massive wins and losses on a website called CSGO Lotto to their combined audience of 14 million. They just left out one small detail. These two slimy fucks actually own this website. T. Martin is the president and Pro Syndicate is the vice president. They created it together. And they were willing to trade their reputation for a short-lived fortune. The same exact story was happening with Twitch streamer Phantom Lord and CSGO Shuffle. He owned the website, rigged the percentages in his favor, scammed his audience, and destroyed his reputation. He went from being one of the biggest streamers on Twitch to a laughing stock of the community. There were two problems. It is against the FTC to not disclose a sponsorship or endorsement. These influencers were acting like they were just playing on the site like anyone else. Number two, they rigged their own websites to showcase a false reality. Quite literally stuffing their own pockets with millions of dollars from their own fans that got them there in the first place. And to make matters even worse, underage children were able to gamble on these sites. The FTC was made aware of their actions and began an investigation. They cracked down in 2016 and two lawsuits were filed against T. Martin and Pro Syndicate. The evidence against them was glaringly obvious. They were clearly in the wrong and were about to face the consequences of their actions. But something interesting happened. T. Martin and Pro Syndicate got off with a slap on the wrist because of one disgusting, slimy piece of fine print. According to their terms, you could play CSGO Lotto for free as long as you asked. Therefore, it's not gambling if you're not paying. Obviously, no one was looking for this or probably even knew what it meant. It was just legal jargon to cover their asses in times like this. As a result of their cases, all they had to do was admit that they were owners and disclose any sponsorships in the future. No fines, no jail time. Phantom Lord was banned from Twitch in 2016 as they cracked down on CSGO skin gambling. There was one casino that dodged a career-destroying bullet, CSGO Wild. The casino was shut down, ownership was exchanged, but the founders came out on top. So who exactly owned CSGO Wild? Well, it's complicated, but short answer, FaZe Clan. The owners at the time being FaZe Banks and FaZe Rain. You see, when they're not 360 no-scoping noobs in Call of Duty, they're running an offshore gambling website for children operating out of Antigua. In 2016, leaked DMs, emails, and proof of who was involved with CSGO Wild began circulating on drama and news channels. It was clear that FaZe Banks was directly involved with setting up this company. But the extent to which he hid his involvement via shell companies is still vague. While every CSGO gambling website came crashing down in July of that year, CSGO Wild posted this on Twitter. It was a bullshit twit longer that explained all of the allegations against CSGO Wild, including who owned it, rigged games, and where it was based. Apparently, CSGO Wild was owned by a guy named Gagey, but that turned out to be a flat out lie. Was he involved? Sure. But more importantly, he was able to take the blame because he's anonymous. He then went on to explain how he worked out a sponsorship deal with FaZe, and he assured everyone that the games were not rigged, which was also a flat out lie. Here's a clip of FaZe Adapt and FaZe Rain gambling as their accounts get refilled with fake money. It was one away. Bro, one off! I would have got fucking... What the fuck? Okay. Dude, I don't even know what the fuck just happened. I lost, but I just... He lost, but he got money. I lost, but I just won seven grand. Is... I'm gonna do a thousand on gold. Okay. Because I feel like the, it'll land on gold. Yeah. I feel like I'll just get an easy two k Yeah. Bro, what's happening? What? I just what got... is happening? I, I thought I, I had 8k. You and did! Now, and now I have a 19k. Why the fuck is this happening? I don't know. The first problem with Gagey's story is that no one in FaZe acknowledged that they were being paid to promote this website. FaZe Rain, who was part owner of FaZe at the time, only updated his description boxes after criticism. Just like the other CSGO skin gambling moguls before them, FaZe Rain and FaZe Banks did not disclose their direct ownership of the site. Well, they did, but that's just because they can't keep their mouth shut. April 11th, 2020. Four years later, FaZe Banks explains his involvement with a CSGO gambling website on episode 11 of the Bad News Podcast. We came up with this idea with these kids. I came up with this idea for um, a different way to do it. 
and we branded it the right way. And um, my motivation for doing it actually was at the time we weren't making enough money to buy a CSGO team all in. The uh, the venture was going to cost us like a million dollars and we definitely did not have anything close to that. So my brain, like I just, look, we got to finesse it. We got to figure out how to make the money to buy this team now because in the next six months, year, this shit's going to, this team's going to be worth like four or five million dollars. And we need, we, we're not going to be able to get into this game, which we, which in our heads, we need to get in this game. So we create this website and um, through our rake and all this shit, um, we were making like $200,000 a day and we set it up in Antigua. We set it up in Antigua. We, I had a house in Antigua for like, where's that for like it's Antigua like in the Caribbean. Island, yeah. yeah. Where? It's it's an island. It's one of those like in, islands where they. The best. It's an around. island in the Caribbean where um ga- where gambling <laughs> we're running a gambling website is completely legal if you have the permits and stuff to do it. So we flew there. We flew there private. Sat down with the guy who runs the country. Basically paid him like a hundred thousand dollars and he gave us the license. We had this whole estate. And we had a f-ing, we had guys with because this place is f-ing crazy. Yeah. Like, but um yeah we were out there and. F- and ran this website for a few months and then the, the whatever it was all regulated and shut down and yeah. we were the only ones who were doing it legitimate so we shut our shit down and there's still people who are doing it making crazy money all people had to do at that point was cross-reference where the websites were based and it was easy to confirm that csgo wild was indeed owned by banks and company as a result of this nothing happened to face clan they did get their spot and nothing happened to banks Gagey, the figurehead, was forced to close up shop in 2016 when Valve sent out a cease and desist to CSGO Wild along with the other 22 gambling websites. Now, all that's left is a trail of evidence piecing this scam together that was right before everyone's eyes. FaZe Clan is currently the world's first esports organization valued at over $1 billion after a SPAC merger, when the entire company is built on a bed of lies.